the way you promote your show and and deliver your show is going to affect your viewers, how long they view, or if they even view, and then getting it out there, obviously, so they know it's out there. That's the biggest problem is it's not that no one wants to watch it. They just don't know it's out there to watch. Um, and transfer of all this information and applying it and getting more post-show views uh, and even live viewers, what that's going to do, as well as we got done with our advertisement packages, which uh, we have some numbers that you can adopt or give you an idea of how we're approaching um, advertisement sales on our end, but it's all based on those post-show views. And this is all just based on Blip TV, which we use to um, store our, all your past shows. Uh, if you post it anywhere else via Facebook, if it's not linked to your Blip or a website or any other, like YouTube, any other platforms, you should be able to get the analytics from that site or those sites, and it'll show you how many views uh, you have per episode and not only for your own knowledge but we'd like those too so we can implement them into our numbers which will grow them which in turn you can sell your advertisement it's mo it's worth more because you're having more views and that's based on our formula um, Chad Jeff and, and Ian are they have the numbers to show and uh, I would say we're picked because they're uh, on the upper end of uh, implementing the promoting and and the way they deliver their show and so they have the results on it so um, you should be able to gain a lot from it so thanks everyone and I'm going to Uh, my name is Dr. Chad Rolfson. I am a friendly neighborhood chiropractor. Uh, my practice is up in uh, uh, in upper part of Des Moines right off of Merle Hay Road right off the interstate. Um, I, uh, my clinic is called the Spinal Tuning Chiropractic Center. And uh, how I got into this gig was uh, years back when um, I, would be in, uh, I would be a guest on J. Michael McCoy's uh, show on, uh, was it 90, uh, Pow, Wow FM or whatever it was that he was with. Um, and I, for some reason, I was a controversial guy. I was, on, with on him, I, I was with him several times on his show, plus I've done a lot with... Um, um, Jan Michelson, WHO. Um, believe it or not, as a chiropractor, I'm their vaccine guy. So uh, whenever they want to stir up some some controversy, which I'm very good at, um, they'll give me a call and then I can make a few comments. So the, it was during the swine flu, and there were Mac and Rooster. They were they were doing their show at the Des Moines Local Live, and Mac calls me up and says, "Hey, you want to you want to come on and." And so we had a great discussion. Rooster and I found out that we had a lot in common because um, his grandchildren are homeschooled and my kids are homeschooled. I got five kids of my own. And um, then the question was asked, why don't you do your own show? <laughs> well, sure, yeah, because I loved, I loved being on the radio. Uh, and in fact, I was asking Jan Michelson, how do you get into radio? And he says, I usually do it with a screwdriver. <laughs> so he says all you got to do is just start somewhere even doing podcasts or whatnot just get get your get your name out there the more consistent that you're doing it the better off you're going to be and he's right the more consistent that you are with what you do more and more people are going to see what you do so um my topic tonight is on social media and um Believe it or not, I'm kind of a private guy. Um, small circle of friends. If you hang out with me, I'm pretty quiet. You know, I, I like to have fun. Um, I love debate. Debate was uh, one of my big topics in college. I went to Palmer College, chiropractic in Davenport. And uh, online, it seemed like I was this whole different persona, this whole different personality. In fact, how I got how I got the most attention was using this little thing called email. You know, not everybody is using email, then everybody started using email. But what you could do with email is you could leverage who saw your stuff, right? Because if you, <coughs> if you have a protest <coughs> uh, with the president of the College of Palmer College, and my whole thing was I didn't like the white jackets in the, the Palmer clinics because made us look like we're medical doctors and we're nothing like medical doctors. I don't want to be a medical doctor. I don't want to try to look like a medical doctor. 
Well, um, so I came up with 1,500 peer-reviewed medical articles talking about white coat hypertension. And the serious, you know, uh, effects of, of people, you know, when they see a white coat, they, they, they get their blood pressure raised and everything. So I leveraged the president of Palmer College by putting him in the, uh, the, the two field and then putting carbon copies of about ah, 500 faculty members and students uh, along with that email. And then boom, instant notification. The president of the Palmer had to respond to me. If he didn't respond, all these people would see. So it was kind of like a, a leveraging. <coughs> it's, I would say that's the first social, social media. <laughs> was the fact that you could carbon copy people to, to put it all out and open, right? <clears throat> so if you can do that, if you can put yourself out there, and if you have the courage to put yourself out there, some wild things can happen. And you basically, if you let it, <clears throat> which I, 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 would, uh, I would say it's beneficial to, to, to let yourself become a separate persona. I'm Chad Rolfson, dad of, you know, dad of five, blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm Dr. Chad, tuning into health. So basically, that's what the hat's for, right? It's, it's a weird thing, but it's like pay, playing a character. And so on my Facebook, I basically play a character. And I, excuse my language, stir the crap around a little bit. I was going to say something different, but, but I like to stir the crap. Because you know what? What does that do? People go, huh? <laughs> they, they look. They think, you know, what's, what's going on over there? When, when <clears throat> and, and I throw things up on my Facebook wall to be controversial, and I love debate, so why not? So people come to my, my, sh my uh, Facebook page a lot of times to be entertained, to be disgusted, and they, either I'm loved or I'm hated. And that's okay with me. I don't mind. Um, but as long as they keep watching, it's like, I don't, I don't care, uh, you know, what you say in the news, but just spell the name right. Okay, it's the same on Facebook. So the more that you can be out there <coughs> in front saying weird things, <laughs> if I say something about President Obama's birth certificate, I can assure you that Ernest is going to be typing in on it, and after 95 exchanges, People are going to go, what's this all about? You know, so it, it draws attention. And that's, that's nothing more than just drawing the attention. And so then what you can do once you get the attention is you can start putting things of substance in. And one of my big things is I love health care. I love the concept of health care because I think the, the public's perception of health care is very perverted. You don't, go to, you don't go to the hospital to get healthy, right? Right? But if you name a large healthcare facility in Des Moines, you'd say, oh, Mercy Hospital. Well, no, it's not right. It's a contradiction. And that's what's one of the things that, drive <clears throat> that drives my, my passion most is pointing out contradictions, whether it be political contradictions, whether it be social contradictions, whether it be contradictions in healthcare. And I've grown quite an audience because of that. Uh, 2,865 friends. And that's give or, two, give or take a couple in a day because some people will get disgusted and unfriend me and other people will, will friend me. So it's, it's the weirdest thing. I get multiple requests for friendships every week. And then there's this little sidebar here. People that you may know. 42 mutual friends, 20 mutual friends. If that mutual friends gets up above about, about 100, I know that's probably a chiropractor because I have a lot of chiropractors, right? It's my niche. What's your niche? So what you want to do is you want to attract the attention of chiropractors. If it gets above 100, I'll say, add a friend. And then it grows and it grows and grows because people are watching you, not necessarily agreeing with you, but your entertainment. And if you want to be a radio show host, if you want to get your message out there, how are you getting people to see what you're doing? And it's got to be congruent with what's going on in your life. <coughs> um, uh, da, 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 oops. 
So on my profile page, I have posted a show. This, I did this a couple months ago, but uh, uh, Dr. Case, Bradley Case, wrote a book called Drugs, Thugs, and the War on Bugs. And well, lo and behold, I had him on my show a couple months ago, so I just popped up my show. And he already had 60 views on that show, but we'll, we'll get 80 by the end of this week. It's constantly reminding people that you're out there. It's, it's getting a blip account, a pro account, and, and throwing up that URL for that show. If, if you look there, 2,865 friends, 186 are online right now, are up. Okay, and that varies. I've, I've looked at this consistently over the, over the time that that, that number has been growing. It's about 10 to 15 percent of your friends are on Facebook at, at any given time the same time you are. So what that means is <clears throat> if I throw something up and then uh, a friend of mine looks on his Facebook page, he's not going to see that right up He's not going to see my post right up there. It's going to be all of his friends' posts and then my post. But if I post my show at different times of the day, it's bound and determined to gain a higher percentage of those people. Oh, Chad has a new show. I'll click on that. And all they got to do, it's cool, they just got to click right there. Dang, I clicked right there. So, <clears throat> so I didn't mean that, but oh well. Um... So, we've got the main page, and that's, that's my life, but I don't have my personal information on it when it comes to home address, home numbers, and all that type of stuff. I have my business stuff, right? You think that's smart? Okay. But I've got pictures of my kids, blah, 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 because people want to see that stuff. They want to know that you're a real person, and, and you, you can share that with them. So, yes, you got a, she's got a cute picture of my kid. He's got one of the noses on. It's my, my six-month-old. So, and she has it on her Facebook profile. <laughs> yeah. Do you find that it's better to do a Facebook page like this or to go public profile? I'll show you here in a second. That's my next one. So, so this is my, my page. This is, this is where I stir the stuff, right? Okay, and people who actually want to gosh, really interested in the show, see what you want to do in your show, you get a public page, okay? And this is the page where you go, okay, I like this. And then so, but 2,800 people, but I only have uh, 492 likes. And that goes up and down, up and down, if I tick somebody off. <laughs> and I don't mind, because you don't, you know, you, you can't make everybody happy, and the more you try, the, the, the worse you're going to do at it. So just be who you are, and that's one of the main things that Facebook has allowed me to do is be exactly who I am, my passion, what I like to do. Even though it's a show persona, I'm having fun with it because it's what I'm interested in, right? Okay. So <clears throat> um, this is where I post all the shows um, pretty consistently. I also do it on the Des Moines Amplified site. Um, post the shows there um, as well. Um, and, and that just gets you more hits and more views and all that type of stuff. Um, but people can go to tuningintohealth.com and go say, okay, I want May 9th show and see what was on and all that type of stuff. Now, can you see this? Now, I wasn't a big fan of the green screen. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the green screen. Do you want to know how I, I solved that? Because you can get really goofy with a green screen. Here's Miss Iowa here. And we have a brick wall, and we've got the, the logo, and, and we had four people in the studio, so and it, it was just a mess. But, but uh, um, Brett was trying to be creative and, and all that type of stuff, which is good. But if you kind of look at my show, it's more along the lines of fun, but it's professional. It's professional style show, blah, blah, blah. So what I had to do is I had to request, and, and Brett will work with you, he's awesome working with you, he'll request to bring it down a, a tad or two. Um, all right, he'll work with you, what you need. And so, well, well now, I don't know if you can see this.
Can you see that background? It's just a black background, and it has just a, a little blue flare going on. So that's what I've worked out now. I might change that in a little bit, but, but that's how you handle the green screen. If the green screen is driving you crazy because of a whole bunch of stuff going on, and some shows might want that, but if you want your show to be a little bit more streamlined, then just work with Brett and he'll, he'll come across. And then I, I like, I don't like going from, from shot to shot to shot to shot, you know, individual shot, then to you when you're speaking. Why not just have it all out there? And then if you have more than, you know, two people or four people, then just have a four shot um, on there. There for something to read on your way to the city exactly. from Amazon.com. So, so I, that's how I leverage just the show, tuningintohealth.com. I mentioned that on my show several times, and it just brings them to the Facebook page. All I did is just go on to godaddy.com, purchase the, the, the domain name, and then put a, a forward direct to Facebook. Okay? So I didn't have to spend any money with, with uh, designing a web page or anything like that. Now, to work with my specific niche, I'm doing something a little different. I'm doing what's, uh, it's an offshoot of tuning into health. It's called tuning into health extra. Okay, and what that allows me to do is, um, it's 150 bucks a month, right? So, how, this is, this is a vehicle to help me pay for what I do here eventually. Okay, what is, we're just starting out right now, but what I'm having doctors do is subscribe and then what I do is I just do a simple podcast, a visual podcast, and then dump it into to, uh, the Facebook Chiropractic Broadcast Network. So basically, this was designed to help pay for what's going on here. Okay? Especially when you're starting out because, you know, you can throw all the ads that you want, but, you know, how many people are watching your show and all that type of stuff. Okay? So, so I started the... the the Chiropractic Broadcast Network, again, it's Facebook, it's free, so you can do that. And I also have a, a tuning, tuning, uh, Spinal Tuning Chiropractic Center, that's my office page, and every, then, every once in a while I'll throw up a video there. So, Facebook, the Chiropractic Broadcast Network? How do you mean, how did I do it? I can take parts of Des Moines Amplified and, and put it in there. I'm a Mac geek, so I love iMovie. Okay? Play with iMovie. Okay? So. And then you have them subscribe to that. Yep. And so what I do is I interview chiropractors from around the world on Skype, record that call, and then put it into a show. Okay? And focus it on the viewership being from where they're, they're from. So their patients and their patients' friends can go see them. And so then we publish it to, uh, to Facebook. And then so it's a tool for um, their patients to brag about their, their chiropractor to their friends via Facebook. And you do, they pay for that. Um, I've got it down to 99 bucks a month with a $199 uh, in, initial uh, enrollment fee. You can do that through Facebook. You can charge viewers. Mm -hmm. No, all, all it is is the blip. Uh, okay. okay, it's Blip TV. I got it. Yep, and so I post it on Blip and, and, and do all that. So you could you interview artists. You could interview... Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you could you could do twenty five dollars a month. It doesn't have to be that, you know. It's 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 where you're where you're at. So, so, because yeah, I, I, f let's face it. If you're having money go go out, you have to have money come in, right? Basic law of economics. So, yeah. Um, so, and I I apply this philosophy to my Facebook and um, to my show. So, and, and it's, a, it's a book that I suggest that you all get. You can get it audiobook. If you've got an iPhone, it's got a little uh, uh, iPhone app that, you know, kind of gives you note cards. Talk less, say more. So, it's how to connect, convey, and convince. 
And the less that you can say, or the more that you can say with the less words, you know, who is it? Voltaire said, brevity is the soul of wit. So the less that you can say, the more that you can say with the less words is the best. So, um, so yeah, it's been a work in progress. It's, uh, we I grew about, about 100 uh, a month. That's what it's kind of staying at is about 100 new people a month. Um, I'd say 75% of those are from people that say, I want to be your friend, and 25% are from me saying, hey, we got more of 100 friends together. I, I've got friends on here with 745 friends, mutual friends. We're going to like each other. <laughs> and it's pure entertainment. And if it, I don't know. I, I spend a lot of time. I'm, I have my office at my, my uh, front desk, and I have my office, uh, my computer in my uh, adjustment room. So I always have Facebook open. And even my patients schedule on here. They'll, they'll instant message me. Can I come in, blah, blah, blah? Yeah, sure, not a problem. It's the weirdest thing. It's it's taken on its own persona. So, you have any questions? Depends. <laughs> some days not at all, and some days. Um, I, let's let's caveat this. I have a three-hour lunch hour. Okay, and because of the gas prices, I'm not going home. <laughs> <laughs> during lunch so I sit at my office and you know I'll have lunch there and and I'll have fun and then throughout the day even even in between patients I'm posting on Facebook and I'm debating Ernest which is a lot of fun he's a great guy so and we go round and round and and, and that's the entertainment value and it's weird when you get people I go to seminars and whatnot and people say oh I've never seen him before I read your stuff all the time or here in Des Moines, uh, not very often, but it's happened a couple times. Oh, I watch your show every once in a while. Really? You're one of the three people that watch my show, huh? <laughs> so Blip offers you, um, it, it offers you analytics. Like I said, you can see how long people are viewing because it gives you a slide scope of, of how long they're actually viewing. And it, it reaches about the 50% mark right about that uh, th by the time the 30% of the show is over. So you're, you, it drops off, and then it levels off, and then it drops off again. So, um, and I, that's just me. Because, you know, not everybody has an hour to spend watching their computer. So they'll get what they can every once in a while and come back and view if they miss something. But it's a lot of fun. You having fun doing your shows? That's the key. <laughs> Yeah, what? I actually just wanted to ask something. You mentioned that there are 10, 10 to 15% that are logged in and don't know via chat. Mm -hmm. Don't undersell that, though. Because, like, if, uh, if I pull up my Facebook account now and I notice you're from Florida City, I've yep. got a question to ask you about that sometimes. You bet. I like your face. <laughs> Boy. The highest number. But um, if you were to go to my Facebook page now, you know some chat pops up. Mm -hmm. You see Missouri friends. Yep. Political pals. Yep. Show guests and all of those. And I can shut those off. Yep. And I have to because when you get above that 2,000 friend mark, you always got somebody wanting to chat with you. Right. Yep. Right. And the neat thing is, what I'm seeing is we kind of evolved from email to even Facebook as a means of communication. Messages. Yep. We're getting more, we probably get more communication via message on Facebook from those that are not logged mm -hmm. It's developed into a central nervous system for the world, really. And that's, if you think about it, that's what it is, is sending messages back and forth. Mm-hmm. Yep. Either they liked it or they're Yep. Or they're against it. And that exactly, it's okay. 
as long as you can you can entertain them you can give them a reason to come back you know that guy pissed me off i'm gonna go i'm gonna go see what he's saying next <laughs> okay <laughs> so that human condition it's the weirdest thing but it's been an animal it's been it's a, been a weird thing to watch develop and and uh um yeah I'm still interested. Four City, debating about Four City. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> um, any other questions? All right. Then I'm going to go see somebody about a German Shepherd. We're adopting a German Shepherd. So his name is Archer. I'm going to call him Archie. And uh, so they're doing the home visit to make sure that we're okay for him tonight. So. And my wife is out, of t is out of town tonight, so we got the babysitter at home. So, all right. Thank you. All right. The, um, but the idea of, and, and I remember when I was playing with the idea of leadership cocktail, I knew I wanted to talk about leadership. This has been an interest of mine. And I remember exactly where it struck me was something unique. I was mowing my lawn on a Wednesday afternoon and trying to think of well, what would make this unique? What would make it stand out and differentiate? And I, I recalled or flashed back on the 15 some years of experience I had tending bar and working in the restaurant business and had a great time doing that. And I thought, well, what would that would be? Would that be unique? And I kind of flashed on. I used to watch the old Jackie Gleason show with my dad. I was like, you know, way young, but you know, I sat there and watched it with him. And one of the recurring skits in that show was uh, uh, Jackie Gleason with Joe the bartender. And basically, the the scene would open up, and it was kind of a, just a, a fake back bar and he was out there and he had a, a character actor named Crazy Guggenheim that would come on and they'd spar and banter and joke and laugh a little bit and I just liked that feel kind of an old-timey um, uh, uh, old-school bartender feel just uh, the bartender's kind of the expert you know you're there to bounce ideas around so I kind of went with that idea and, and I think as I've kind of looked around and scanned the horizon that seems to be a fairly unique approach to leadership to, to leadership I think there are a lot of leadership um, shows out there, but as far as I can tell, this is fairly unique. So the idea of finding something that makes you stand out and something that has kind of a look and a feel. So Chad talks about getting into character. Um, I'll put this tie on. I use that same phraseology. I'm getting into character. So I want to talk to you a little bit about um, just kind of the, the philosophy of, of talk production, broadcast, some of the language and the rhythm and the, uh, the logic of that. The um, you know, the, each new medium draws upon the previous medium for content and format. When television first came into popularity in the 1950s, it essentially drew upon radio for content. I mean, then the Amos and Andy show moved to television, and Jack Benny show moved to television, the soap operas moved from radio to television. But they also then used that same, some of that same formatting. And um, talk shows first became popular in television and drew probably from um, news, radio news. And just uh, the idea of the talking heads, of course, in radio, you can't see who's talking, but you can hear the voice in the back and forth. Um, I think what we're doing draws from television and broadcast, um, but then also I think probably we're drawing a little bit from some of the, the music videos, and particularly the fast cuts, the, the fast pace of moving back and forth. So each medium and each uh, genre really has its own rhythm and its own language and its own uh, logic. And so in, in a talk show, whether we're talking radio or we're talking television or what we do, it's really kind of a, um, an hourglass effect. And you start out fairly broadly and, and you become more specific and more focused on the topic. And then as the show starts to wind down or the segment starts to wind down, you become much more broad. Um, you can see it if you, uh, Oprah Winfrey, Charlie Rose, they all use those same kinds of techniques. And actually they're working with their, the, the visual production people to reinforce that. So if I think about during an interview, the, the, the discussion is we start out fairly broadly. And I'm just going to make up some, some banter here. So tell me about yourself, or why you're interested in this topic. And then it's just more and more narrow. So what do you think about that? Well, tell us your experience about this. And so you've kind of established what they're, who they are, what their connection is, and slowly uh, narrow down to their area of expertise. And then you start to, to uh, bring that back out again. So tonight we're talking about this and this and, and do kind of a reestablishment. So when we look at transitions in, and uh, on the sheet there, basically talking about starting out with a base and establishment, getting more focused, more narrow, and then expanding back out to end that segment. And there's really kind of a, a symmetry to it. Um, and and if, again, if you look at a television show, uh, I always think about Roseanne because they almost, Roseanne uh, Barr at her show, it almost always started out with a picture of their house. 
that was what's called the establishing shot. So we knew where they were, what was going on, and, and that told us, okay, here's where we are now. And then they could jump off and go into the story and wherever they wanted to go at that point. So the idea of uh, there is a, a rhythm, you know, and there's, um, we have essentially 15-minute segments, 12-minute segments, and 9-minute segments, but there's a, a rhythm to those, you know, kind of the expansive to the more narrow and then back out the expansive again. There's also a visual language, and this is a great time to work with your engineer with the producers there, John and Clark, um, because typically the, uh, and, and Clark, or uh, Chad referred to four shots, um, one shot, two shot, three shot, four shot, basically it tells how many people are on the screen. So if I'm on the screen by myself, I'm a one shot. If there are two people on the screen, it's a two shot. So um, going back to the idea of an establishing shot, and then we narrow down. Typically, the rhythm, the, the visual language of, of a talk show is it starts out with me, the host, and then I introduce the show, establish you know, what we're here for, why we're, uh, who I am, what's my area of expertise, what we're talking about. And then I introduce the guest, and we go to a two shot. So now it's me, and, I, and I, I'm bringing this person in, but I'm not just bringing it up by themselves. They have to have a context. So I'm bringing them in, and, and we do a two-shot. Then I ask my first question, and then we go to a one-shot with the guest. And then before my next question starts, we bring up a two-shot so that I'm not some disembodied voice asking the question. But now it's the two of us talking. I fade out of the picture, and it's a one-shot with the guest. And so it's just kind of, again, there's a repetition to it, but there's a symmetry and a balance to it as well. So, um, and I've worked with Clark and Brett to both think about how we present that. Now, some shows, and this is, again, thinking about what I do, and I, I, I'm like Chad, I tend to take my guests very seriously, and I want to show them a great deal of respect. So when they're on the air, they are the expert in my mind, and that's how I want to promote them and how I want them to be perceived. So um, you can mess with those uh, those logics, some of those cliches, um, and what happens is they become noticeable in and of themselves. And so, but if that's what you're trying to do, um, then that's fine. But think about the messages that you're trying to create. So the the language, the visual language, is kind of that interplay between one shots and two shots. The the rhythm then is how those are introduced. And essentially, I want to end each segment the same way I started. So a one shot on me. You've been watching. Here's who I am. Thank you. We'll be back in a few moments. Now, we'll kind of walk through those transitions. I'm not going to read them all to you. But uh, again, it, it kind of reinforces what, are the, what is that rhythm that you're trying to create. And then the idea of uh, having your look and your feel. So it's something that's unique to you. So if we can go to this, this handout, I'll kind of highlight some things on it. The, uh, basically, I, I took this and divided into three segments. You've got a beginning segment, a middle, uh, an end segment, a final segment, and then you've got middle segments or multiple segments potentially if we, if we do an hour show here. So at the first segment, you're essentially trying to you do those establishing shots. What are we watching? What is this show about? Who am I? What is my expertise, my relationship to the show? Um, how can I connect with the viewers or how can they connect with me? And then what is the topic? And then at that point, I bring in the guest. And so typically, I will script those first four bullets, those first three bullets. So I've got to memorize. Amazing, my challenge is to make it sound like it's not memorized, that I'm just talking uh, uh, comfortably with my, my guest or with the, the viewer, rather. So what is the show? What do we do here? Who am I? What is my expertise? And then, then you can go spring off, okay, what are the topics tonight? And then introduce my guests. And I've got a pet peeve about guests. Again, my, my thing is, ultimately, we want to respect them. They're the expert while they are on the show. Um, I, it was, and it was on Des Moines Amplified. I remember early on when I first started to tune in trying to figure out what, what was going on here. Somebody had a guest on, and she didn't know her guest's name. And it was, that just it floored me. I mean, talk about unprofessional. Said, so, well, we, you know, I've got a guest on tonight. Jeannie, um, Jeannie, I don't know your name. Could you introduce yourself? And I'm like, well, that's, you know, ultimately incredibly disrespectful to the guests and not even know their name. So that's kind of stuck with me, obviously. The, uh, so I think it's important to, to introduce them, their full name pronounced accurately. I always ask for a bio from my guest because I want to introduce them appropriately. I want to give them credit for who they are. Plus, then they have a connection to the show. So I will ask for that information up ahead of time. And then so at that point, we launch into. And, and what I do is I pre-plan my discussion. I don't choreograph it. I don't script it. But I'll, I'll huddle with my guest a couple days before so it's still fresh when we actually go on the air and, and identify for an hour-long show four, maybe five general topics. Again, I don't want to blindside them, but I don't want to sound like it's scripted either. But that way they kind of know what to expect. It gives me a chance to kind of think about how I'm sequencing the information. I also then know at the end of each segment how I'm going to tease or preview that next segment because I know what we're going to talk about. 
So at the end of the first segment, you almost need to look at each segment as a, as a standalone program. So I've introduced, but then I also need to um, outro. I need to, uh, to finalize the program, as if we were ending not only that segment, but that show. So before the first break, you want to reiterate, why are we here? What are we talking about? This is my guest. You don't do need to do another introduction, but just acknowledge their full name. Um, kind of summarize, what do we talk about in this first segment, and then to give a tease. So when we come back, we're going to talk about whatever it might be. And again, hopefully you'll entice the viewer to stick around. And then, I'm Jeff Hanna. You're watching Leadership Cocktail. And my tagline is, it's talk with a twist. And it's just, and that's my engineer's cue that it's over. That's my cue, and it's again, kind of that rhythm. It's talk with a twist. Um, if, you, if you have a tagline, that's a really nice way. Um, it's kind of a mindless thing anymore, but I try to mention it at least once in each, once in each segment. But it's a nice cue that it's the end of the segment. So then we move into the middle segments, and it's, again, the same sort of thing. Um, bringing back, welcome back to Leadership Cocktail. Uh, my name is Jeff Hanna. We're here tonight talking about whatever. And this is my guest, Mike Rosendahl. And then um, just a brief reintroduction. Mike Rosendahl, technology expert or technology leader, something like that. You can probably reiterate that point. If you're interested in communicating with us, chat with us, um, call in, whatever that might be. And then at the end of that segment, if you treat it kind of a standalone program in and of itself, I've got to back out of the program. I've got to de-establish, as it were. Um, so you've been watching Leadership Cocktail. Tonight we're talking about this with my guest. Um, I'm Jeff Hanna. It's talk, Leadership Cocktail Talk with a Twist. And the final segment is uh, virtually the same until you get to the very end. And there's kind of a sequence to this. And I actually will script the last one, two, three, four segments, the last four bullets. So um, again, it's kind of a mindless activity for me. I don't have to think about it, but I can end the way I want it to end. And it can be a clean ending rather than trying to grasp how am I going to end this show. So the, the, end, the outro of the last piece of that is um, summarizing the episode. You know, tonight we've been talking about, and then thank my guest, thank you, Mike Rosendahl, for being here tonight with us, and I will use their, his or her last full name. Um, thank you for viewing tonight, or for tuning in tonight, and I always thank the viewers as well. And again, you see the, the rhythm is starting to take there at this point. So um, if you're interested in seeing the shows, you can go to Blip TV or go to Des Moines Amplified.com, direct them to where they can pick up the show. I'm Jeff Hanna, senior bartender here at Leadership Cocktail. You've been watching Leadership Cocktail. It's talk with a twist. And again, it's got that rhythm, it's got kind of that finality. So each segment is really kind of standalone, which means I need to introduce it and I need to summarize it. But then I also, between segments, or before the next segment, I can tease. And here's what we're going to talk about. So it gives it, uh, again, you go back to talking about the rhythm. We talk about the logic and there's a symmetry to how the shows go. The, uh, um, I'm, I'm with Chad, I, I'd rather be professional. Um, than to be goofy and not be taken seriously. I can have fun, and, and hopefully the, and, and the whole bartending angle allows me to have a little bit of fun with that. But um, I want to be taken seriously. I'm a professional. I want my guests to be taken seriously as well. So uh, anything I do to respect them and show them respect, um, you know, usually the only humor I'll have is poking fun at myself. That's the only safe humor, make fun of yourself. Um, and then we do play around a little bit with that concept with the, the cocktails and some of the history we share with that. So that's kind of my approach to, um, to Internet talk. Drawing from, again, radio uh, news, drawing from the television talk uh, um, uh, genre. The uh, watching Oprah, watching Charlie Rose, and watch the rhythms and some of the camera angles, that's essentially they're going through that dance, that give and take, one shot, two shot. They find different ways of doing two shot. They do um, like a reaction shot, but you can see the back of the guest's head. But it's essentially a two shot because there are two people on screen, but you don't have two faces looking at you. So those, again, kind of my, uh, a little bit more pontification, some of my ideas, some of the things I like to get across, and some of the, the strategies that I use uh, in, in my production. Any questions for me? No, well, not that I picked up on. Uh, exactly, they may have been trying. <laughs> but I want to leave that as an option. I don't want to shut that door. <laughs> Thank you for reading. Exactly, exactly. Uh, just blip TV at this point. Well, something I'll tell you that's just strange, I can't begin to figure it out, it's one of the world's fullest people. If you 
put all four segments up on YouTube. Everybody watches the fourth one first. Oh, really? And then over the next four or five days, <laughs> one, two, and three will start to come up. Huh. You save the best for last, maybe, or something, huh? I don't know. Camera was telling me that started with that. But Interesting. I'm sure, the numbers, <laughs> sure enough. Uh, <laughs> what was this about? Because you watched the fourth one, I guess. Oh, it was pretty good. And then you just kind of Nice. Nice. Right, right, right. Hmm. So there's, uh, again, think about the image that you're trying to project, what you're trying to do, the feel and the look that you're trying to create with your show. And these are just some, some strategies for how to um, uh, kind of go through that show. And again, the language and some of the rhythm. The, the idea of each making each segment a standalone piece, that's where you absolutely have to have the intro and the summary. So that if that's all that I saw, I'd still have a pretty darn good idea of what, what the show was about. Yeah, you hope we hope they do. Absolutely. Yeah, please. Um, I started with my friends. Basically, well, I, basically, I was looking for people, not just. Yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't tapped anybody yet there. The yeah, or other hosts exactly on those week. Yeah. yeah. So if you if you get a call on late on a Monday night. Don't answer it because they need you on Thursday. Or it's me calling you on Thursday. The, um, I, uh, I tapped into people that I thought had some leadership expertise, again, um, in, that I knew. And that's kind of opened up some other doors for me as well. The, I actually had a little trouble early on because people didn't take it seriously. You know, I, I wanted to be fair and upfront about here's the concept. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pouring drinks. I'm not literally. But, um, and they thought, well, you know, this is just a goofy show and he's going to embarrass me if I go on the air. And, and again, that's exactly what I did not want to do. So I'm just have kind of tapped into my personal Rolodex and found people and they have suggested some people as well. Um, and, and I think once people find out that you're professional and you're serious about it, then they're much more willing, much more receptive to come on. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> With their permission, of course, absolutely. <laughs> they know coming in that that's what's going to happen, so there's no secrets. Exactly, Kelly. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Again, I appreciate a little bit of your time, a little bit of the, the forum here. Um, Ian, you got the next gig, the next shift? Thanks. What I wanted to do was take a different approach, uh, and since we are a technology show, I own a computer store here in town, so I've got some resources. Uh, we put together a website. Uh, we're just using WordPress, so some of you may have heard that. It's a free solution out there. Uh, a lot of your GoDaddies and hosting companies will install it free if you pay them the 8 bucks a month. Um, so we drive everybody to this. This is our focal point. So when you go to localhostshow.com, you come here. We've got this slider that shows all the episodes. Well, some of them. <laughs> we do a two-hour show. Uh, we're going to be converting to a one-hour show in about three weeks. Um, but we've done a two-hour show, and sometimes that limits you on getting your stuff uploaded quick. Um, I have to do a lot of conversion, uh, making the file size smaller and things like that. So that's why it's inconsistent. Um, but yeah, so we, we draw everybody to this site. And if you go down here a little further, then we take them everywhere else that we put our content. So when you come here, you obviously can click there to go and see us on Des Moines Amplified, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, we're in iTunes. Is anybody else in iTunes where you can search and find you? That is a very valuable reason. It's free. You go in there, you sign up, you verify who you are. They verify that you're, you're real. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then you just go and you can go to podcast and, and search and you show up. They click subscribe. And then every week when you post your show, it's automatically downloaded. So they don't have to come find you. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, and then we do YouTube as well. And then uh, we use a RSS feed. Has anyone else ever heard of those? Um, what that is is it's just a technology that you have different RSS readers. Google has one. Uh, and there's different applications you can install for both Mac and Windows. And if you find something that you like, you just install that RSS feed. And it's kind of like iTunes where it pulls it directly to you. Um, but we do that so when we post stories th throughout the week, if uh, Google announces something, like yesterday, Google announced their new music service to rival uh, Amazon's cloud service. It happened after our show, so we 
go ahead and put in the RSS feed so people can pull in and grab it. Uh, we also do something a little different. Um, when we're live on the air, we tell people to go to localhostshow.com slash live. What this does is it gets people to our website, but also pulls in the video and the chat on the same page. The, uh, we're in the car, we're at a red light, so, he kisses me. Um, this is, this is and very he simple. just yeah, comes, if, if you, you know, takes really off his seatbelt, just comes, I'm like completely code, smashed up against the driver's side window. So and I'm like, with WordPress, what are you doing? It works. He's like, it doesn't require don't you want to kiss him? Going, doesn't require calling no. me. You can mm -hmm. pretty much no figure kiss. it out in the FAQs. He goes, you're so um, beautiful, you're so sexy. And I'm like, no. everywhere else on our site because we bring him here live. You're done. I drop him off. So he goes, so really do you want, want to come inside to my room? And I'm like, the traffic. no. They come here and obviously well, what part of uh, no, don't you understand? The show. Well, let um, me give you a funny story. Me. And I had a chance to see it third. Uh, I was the uh, the viewer of uh, said first date. Of things that we've done and to get some hits. it will probably shine uh, some like insight into why he probably kissed you, that why he felt comfortable rubbing viewers. his hand against your leg, and, and why he still felt comfortable asking you inside. What we did, um, a friend uh, of mine, were out, we were playing darts, and, I asked and for an uh, this couple, every time um, that they have a bout in uh, town, they show up on our show. This couple came up, and they wanted to play darts as well. All and the, the female was dressed was very the, uh, nice. Um, they put it on their site. So I'd recommend if, uh, if you can find a way to, to partner up with other people in the area. There it is. That's, that's wicked. I mean, it, whatever your show is, find out if there's somebody else that might want to partner up with you or in, in our aspect they're not even technology related it's just some girls going around a track and we thought it was awesome um, and I sponsored them uh, for the higher for HLC computers and so it was just a, a win-win let's get you on the show and then we started to see the viewers and the sponsorship uh, we that's probably the best shows we do is when the girls are on sometimes that's good sometimes that's bad um, but I just I, I like to point out the the different things that we've kind of done we're the, we like to push the envelope. We've, we've done things here that um, have gotten us views, like we order pizza, uh, we took it on our phone and go across the street at Sarpino's, broadcast it live over the internet, go over there. We picked up a girl over there and brought her back for Cinco de Mayo and gave her a beer and had these interesting conversations with people, and that's the stuff that gets viewers. Um, we try to remain professional, but sometimes, uh, sometimes we have too much fun. Uh, the question I, was, I, I had in my head when I was listening to everybody else is how many of you have a, a Blip Pro account? Are they all just the free account? Uh, we use the Pro um, because of what it does when we convert it. There is this distribution link. And we just recently converted our account, so some of this isn't set up. But I like to point out that this will... If you have the pro account, you can upload to Blip once. It'll re-encode it and distribute it to these different channels. So Vimo is another uh, video site out there. YouTube, if it's under the 15-minute link, it will automatically post your YouTube account. Uh, it'll post it all over AOL Video, VODPOD, I, I mean, obviously the iTunes. We don't use all these. I don't, I don't think I use these two. Um, automatically post your Facebook. And if people actually still use MySpace, it'll post it there too. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. If, if you haven't noticed it, it'll, it'll do a lot of it for you. So instead of having to spend three hours updating all your feeds, you can, the, the, it's $9 a month for the pro account. And with that, once you have to set it up, it takes some time with these different providers. Like down here, this is the really cool stuff. Boxy, uh, DivX TV, the Roku box, TiVo. Samsung, um, a lot of new TVs are coming out now. The Samsung has that little built-in player. This will get your content on people's TVs. So it takes a little bit of time to set up, but once you do, it's one spot. You click it, wait a couple hours, and it's been pushed out. Yeah. But that's what you have to do when you configure it. And then some, with some of these, you don't. But what you have to do is you have to go in. Boxy has to approve your account your content 
not based on if they agree with it or disagree with it, but make sure it's not just a couple of kids, you know, being really, really funny. They want to make sure it's a real show um, and things like that, but that'll push it out to TVs. And I think that's the next step is you put all this hard work and all this time in producing these shows, and you're just putting it one or two places, you're, you're losing all this potential. You come here, you pay the nine bucks, and you can blast it out to, to everywhere. So I'm short and sweet, because um, Chad covered everything on, I mean, I could cover Facebook and Twitter, we do all that stuff. Um, but I think it's, it's just thinking outside the box. That's what we've always tried to do. We're all three computer geeks, and so when we get bored, we think of new ways. Is there any questions? <laughs> uh, a lot of times when they're on, we talk about the charities that they're involved in. Um, they do a lot of charity work uh, for MS. Um, wow, I can't even think of anything now. But they, every bout, there's a different charity they work with. And so every time they come on, we try to highlight what they're doing. Um, they go out and do a lot of stuff in the community, uh, bike rides, um, bike nights, two different, you know, one's the cycle, one's the motor. Um, just the, the stuff where they're going to be at. Uh, we try to have them, s at first we had them send tech girls. One played World of Warcraft. If anybody knows what that game is, we all play it. So it was just great, you know, being able to, to concentrate on the tech aspect. Um, but there wasn't a lot on their team. So about after the third or fourth, they've been on the show six times. And so I think the fourth time, uh, we just started either getting repeats or people that weren't technical. But we roll with it. If you're having problems with any of this stuff, I'll be able happy to help. It's fun. Um, the first time you see your show easily accessible with three clicks on your 57-inch TV is pretty cool. This is where everything's going, in my opinion, too. They're going to get rid of satellite and cable, and you're going to have two pipes that come into your house, one for power, one for information. You're not going to have cable and satellite companies. You're going to have one pipe, and then you'll a la carte everything. So if you want CNN, you'll get that, but you won't get all the other 180 channels that aren't worth anything. Yeah, with this with uh, local hosts, we we did we uh, we went out and found us a, uh, a theme, and then we tore it apart. Kind of broke it down. When we first had this, there was uh, this third column wasn't here. Okay. That pulls in our uh, Twitter feed, mm -hmm. and then uh, shows you know the different stars we've gotten, and all that stuff. So we had to to import that and make a few changes. But yeah, you're right. You can definitely. You get the WordPress, find a theme. You can find free themes that look pretty decent, or there's some really good themes that are 75 to 125 bucks. You own it for life, and you're free to manipulate it any way you want. Yeah, it's an it's an awesome uh, package, that's for sure. Correct. Yep. That's on 42nd Street. <laughs> So that's all I have. Thank you for your time.